ever suffer from headaches, fatigue or drowsiness, depressed or irritable mood? Do you ever have difficulty concentrating or experience flu-like symptoms, nausea or muscle pains and stiffness? Not to worry, you probably just need another soda because all of these are symptoms of caffeine withdrawal. 1,3,7-trimethylxanthine, the chemical name for caffeine, is naturally found in the beans, leaves, and fruits of almost 60 different plants, and it actually serves as a natural pesticide. Caffeine actually developed in these plants to deter pests and help preserve the life of the plant. These days, caffeine is the most commonly consumed psychoactive drug, and it's estimated that around 90% of adults consume caffeine on a daily basis. It's also estimated that soda and sweetened drinks are the single most consumed food in the American diet. Figure in that Americans spend about $70 billion every year, and I would call the soda pop industry a huge success. But before soda was ever available at a burger stand or vending machine, soda was sold exclusively by pharmacists. In the 1850s, drugstores actually sold soda to cure some physical malady or headache. The combination of caffeine and cocaine was known to be able to cure a headache, but pretty quickly they saw that clients would return with a rebound headache and would need to consume more soda. At the time, it was considered that these stimulants were safe and it wasn't until 1914 that the use of cocaine and opiates in over-the-counter products actually became illegal. The craze over soda pop became even more intense with the prohibition of alcohol in 1919. In 1920, an article was published in Drug Topics, which stated, The soda fountain is the most valuable, most useful, most profitable, and altogether most beneficial business building feature assimilated by the drugstore in a generation. By the early 1920s, nearly every single drugstore had a soda fountain. And these days you can get soda just about anywhere. In fact, people drink more soda than water. It's estimated that the average American drinks around 52 gallons, or just under 600 cans of soda, every single year. Now, I can enjoy a tasty beverage just as much as the next person can, but with withdrawal effects like headaches, difficulty concentrating, and depressed mood, it hardly seems worth it. It's also important to remember that where there are withdrawal effects, there's also addiction and dependence. The list of withdrawal effects that I gave earlier comes from a John Hopkins study that examined 170 years of caffeine research. The study also stated, we know adults and children can become physiologically and psychologically dependent on caffeinated soft drinks, experiencing a withdrawal symptom if they stop. And as I described in the Psychology of Pleasure video, overstimulating our senses not only causes us to develop addictions and dependence, but it also dulls our sensations and can make it harder to enjoy other things. So too much high fructose corn syrup and aspartame aren't only going to rot your teeth, but they're also going to dull your senses so that it's harder to enjoy natural flavors and natural sweetness. But don't worry, just as you can dull your sensations, you can also get them back. And just a few days of abstaining from these sweeteners can help reset your senses so that you can enjoy those natural flavors again. And while adults can deal with these withdrawal effects, it's a little bit more worrisome when it comes to children. If children are becoming physically and psychologically dependent on these soft drinks, aren't we just setting them up to become obese adults too? In 1981, the FDA actually proposed that caffeine be removed from these drinks due to its negative health effects and addictive properties. But the soda industry responded and effectively avoided that proposed removal by saying that caffeine was only added for its flavor. But let me ask you this, when you are craving a Coke, is it simply the flavor that you're craving or is it that caffeine buzz? 
be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Because the John Hopkins study that I mentioned earlier actually found that people could not distinguish the taste of caffeine. Now I know what you're thinking, that caffeine-free Coke tastes horrible. But you should know that the caffeine-free Coke also contains about half the sugar as regular Coke. And they're really not required to tell us what else they may have done differently to it either. Even more worrisome, though, is the fact that the caffeine content isn't even listed. While they're required to list caffeine as an ingredient, they are in no way required to tell you how much caffeine their product contains. So here is a short breakdown of the caffeine contents in some commonly consumed beverages. You'll notice that Diet Coke actually contains more caffeine than regular Coke. So if you feel like you're addicted to Diet Coke, it could be simply due to its higher caffeine content. You'll also notice that most of these are about comparable to the caffeine contained in a shot of espresso. And if you are thinking you could give up Cokes, but you can't give up your caffeine, you could actually switch over to green tea or black tea, and then you would be avoiding all of those extra chemicals and extra sugars, but you could still get that caffeine buzz you're probably craving. So a 20 ounce bottle of Coke contains 65 grams of sugar, and that's more than twice what's contained in a Snickers bar. But most people don't even consider their pop as a dessert. It's something you have along with your burger and fries, along with your meal, or even while you're just running around running errands. It also says right there on the bottle that it contains about 22% of your daily value of carbs. So if you're drinking four 20 ounce Cokes a day, you should just realize that those four sodas alone are satisfying your daily allotment of carbohydrates. The bottom line is if you're trying to lose weight, lay off the sodas or at least significantly cut back and make sure that you're drinking a whole lot more water. Between the excess calories, the empty gonna turn straight into fat calories, the excess sugar and the excess carbs, soda is going to have you on a fast track to diabetes and obesity. And Diet Coke is even worse. Not only does it contain more caffeine, but the artificial sweeteners used in them have also been linked to weight gain, diabetes, and even neurological damage. In a CBS special, Dr. Holly Phillips actually recommended no soda or a significant cutback and she even stated that for those who are unwilling to give up their soda, I would rather see them have the sugar than the chemicals. In addition to the headaches and moodiness you may experience, these drinks have also been linked to heart disease, tooth decay, insomnia, osteoporosis, kidney stones, behavioral problems, acne, and cancer. And just to drive it home, it's important to realize that the only liquid your body really needs is water. And it's kind of bass backwards that we've ended up in a society where soda is the number one most purchased grocery store item and it doesn't have any nutritive benefits whatsoever. It actually has tons of health risks associated with it. But Coke spends a lot of money advertising to us and making sure that Coke is incredibly convenient for you. So if you are a Coke addict, it's okay. Just know it's in your best interest to try and lay off. And if you don't give up soda to improve your health or your physical appearance, to lose some weight or even to prolong your life, then give it up to save money or simply to make me happy. Have you ever worried that your intestinal organs might suddenly catch fire? Well, not to worry. It's very likely that you're actually consuming flame retardants. In a future video, we'll answer the question, why is there a flame retardant in my Mountain Dew? So now that you're deciding to give up sodas, you're probably going to have problems getting started in the morning. You're probably going to have problems with energy. So in a future video, I'm going to give you the top 10 foods you can eat to help give you more energy so you can conquer your day. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. And if anyone you know is a pop drinker or pop addict, be sure to share this video. You can also go on Facebook and search for Psyche Truth and friend me. Please friend me on the Facebook. 
To learn more about food chemicals and how they affect your health, check out my video, Are Food Chemicals Killing You? And to see the video I mentioned earlier that explains how consumption of sugar causes weight gain and excessive hunger, check out The Truth About Carbohydrates. Do you feel like soda pop is controlling your mind? Check out the video, Mind Control in a Can. And for the video I referenced earlier about overstimulation and addiction, check out my video, The Psychology of Pleasure.